Let's look at an example of a homogeneous system. So recall that homogeneous means that there's a, a zero here as the constant vector. Um, so I've written out a nice uh, four by five homogeneous system of equations for, for us to take a look at right here. And if um, I were to write out the augmented matrix, uh, we'd be augmenting with the zero vector. So it would just look like this, and there's a bar of zeros over here. And as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, the row operations uh, are, are going to preserve this, row, this column of zeros. This, this will always be zeros no matter what we do. So it's kind of silly to write them there. And most of the time, uh, well actually pretty much always, um, we, we skip doing that. So uh, I'll just take uh, A, which is 2, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 1, 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and row reduce this guy. So let's see. So strategy for how to row reduce this one. Um, well, I think I like the look of the second row there. So I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to uh, add a couple copies of it to the first row to, to kill off these twos, and add a copy of it to the third row to kill off these ones here. So I'm going to do um, 2 times row 2 added to row 1, and 1 times row 2 added to row 3. OK. And so then um, we'll get 0, 0, 3, minus 6, 3, and negative 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 1 stays the same. And then 0, 0, 0, oops, minus 3, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now, the moment I see uh, this one right here, uh, that one makes me very happy because um, I know that I can immediately divide through by a constant to replace this one term with a 1 and then use that 1 to kill off everything else in this column by adding the appropriate multiple of this row to everything else. So I guess I did uh, <coughs> minus 1 third times row 3. And then I'm going to do, um, I'm going to add 6 row 3's to row 1 and 3 row 3's to row 2. And uh, what's the last one? Minus 1 row 3 added to row 4. And then that will tidy things up significantly. So I have 0, 0, 3, 0, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 2, minus 3, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Oh, just got rid of that guy. Sorry. Um, and zero zero one zero one. Okay. Now let's see. So I've got uh, this row here is a scalar multiple of this row here. So I can uh, get rid of one of those and rewrite it as let's see. So um, what all am I going to do? So I'm going to going to take this one, I'm going to take that one and move it up a little bit. This one is going to die because I'm going to subtract um, minus 3 uh, row 4 added to it. And then I'm going to uh, make this one here start with positive numbers. So I'm going to do um, minus 1 times row 2. and Let's see. So uh, rewriting the rows in a different order. I'll take that one first. And then I have 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And then I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then I have a row of zeros from that guy that got canceled. 
and I'm so close to reduced row echelon form. I just oops uh, need to get rid of this guy. So I'll add two copies of this row to row one. And that will give me, uh, let's see, one, one, that part stays the same, that part gets killed off, that's still a zero. And then I have negative one plus two, so I get a one there. Okay, so that is now in uh, reduced row echelon form. So this is the reduced row echelon form of A. And what were my row operations there? I did uh, two row twos um, added into row one. And I didn't write down the row swaps that I did in the previous step, but I think you can figure it out. Um, okay, so at this point here, we uh, convert back to equations because this is the simplest that we can make this system of equations. And so the first row says x1 plus x2 plus 0 plus 0 plus x5 is equal to 0. Um, and then the next one is uh, that's 2x3. So we've got x3 plus x5 equals 0. And the third row just says x4 is equal to 0. And so we go back and say, let's identify our pivots. So we've got a pivot here, pivot here, and a pivot here. So our pivots are x1, x3, and x4. And so then, oops, that means that um, x2 and x5 are going to be free. Uh, <coughs> so let's give them their equations. So we're going to say let x2 be s and let x5 be t. OK. So then I can solve these uh, initial equations in terms of s and t. And they're going to become uh, x1 equals minus s minus t. Um, x3 is equal to minus t. Oh, and I guess x4 is still 0. I didn't need to do anything with that one. Whoops. OK. Um, OK, and so now I have, um, between these guys and these guys, I have uh, five equations. And in particular, I have one equation for each uh, of my, my unknown variables. So then I can say, OK, so x is going to be, and x1 is minus s minus t, x2 is s, x3 is minus t, x4 is 0, and x5 was t. So that's my x. And so I'm going to pull this apart into the s part, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and the t part. And so that's minus 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. Now, if this last part that I wrote where I extracted the s and the t parts, if that looked weird or you didn't s don't see why that makes sense, uh, try doing it in reverse. So in other words, um, take this expression here and multiply the, um, uh, the scalars into each uh, of these components and then add them together and you'll see that you get back to where we started from. So I was just thinking in reverse, kind of um, factoring things apart. Wow, that's a terrible color. I'm never going to use that color again. Um, and so what we saw here is what happens in general. And that is that the um, if we're looking at the number of variables, then we have five total variables, x1 through x5, minus three leading variables. So these ones, the, these are the pivots leaves you with two free variables. And so the number of pivots plus the number of free variables should always be the total number of variables that you have. And 
So from that, um, you can see when you're going to when are you going to get um, free variables? Well, if you have a, a homogeneous system, I mean, there's lots of times you're going to get free variables, but in particular, you can see that if you have a homogeneous um, system with more uh, variables than equations, um, then your total number is going to definitely be strictly greater than the number of pivots, which means you're going to have free variables, which means you're going to have infinitely many solutions. Right, so uh, again, my justification for this statement is that in this case, the, the total number of variables is strictly greater than the number of pivots. And that implies that the number of free variable, you're going to have free variables. <laughs>